Okay, so we're in section 2.2 .2 graphs for qualitative data. In this example, it says 25 students are asked their blood type. The response is follows. So we got A, B, type O, type A, type A, B, type O, type O, all the way down. These are all out of order. We want to put those in order. And here again is the list here for qualitative data. It may in some cases be ideal to order that, but what they've done here is just went ahead and ordered it in alphabetical order. Um, go back to one of the videos I did on Pareto charts. I discussed that, that certainly this could be turned into a Pareto chart. How we're to address the issue here, before we get to the pie chart, we're going to have to find relative frequency. So go ahead and add the frequency together. 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. And then last 15 plus 10 is 25. So now what you want to do, grab a calculator, divide each one of those by 25. And one thing's for sure, it's nice when you're divided by 25, you won't run into any repeating decimals. So I'm just going to kind of extend this here a little bit to the right. And then we'll go ahead and call this relative frequency so what I want to do grab a calculator here take 8 and divide that by 25 that should be 32 percent 8 divided by 25 there you go you get 0.32 times 100 converts that 32%. All right, next one. 2 divided by 25 should give us 0 0.08. Then times 100, even 8%. Okay, next with a 5, 5 divided by 25, of course, is 1 fifth. That would be 20, 20%. And the last one's going to be 40%. And let me grab this over here. If we go ahead and do the same thing, add those all up, that total should be a perfect 100, particularly that we didn't have to do any rounding here. 32 plus 8 is 40, 40 plus 20 is 60, 60 plus 40, there we go, we got our even 100% there, great. Okay, one last thing we've got to do here is the adjustment for, extend this a little bit farther here. four degrees that's all entail all that information looking at 360 degrees there for the total and that's where we'll get that when we're done adding those together so we'll go ahead and call this degrees and again to make that conversion over degrees you don't have to do this in a lot of ways you can just kind of guess uh, where those wedges would be. But this gives you, if you want to grab a protractor and do this, certainly you don't have to. Here the first one, 0 0.32 times 360 gives us, I'm going to round this to the nearest whole number, but let me go in right here, that was uh, again the 100 and 115 degrees. Simply again making that adjustment into a decimal 
times 360. So all of these you're going to multiply times 360. But of course, those percentages have to be converted into decimal form to do that. Next one here is 8%, 0.08 as a decimal times 360. 28, we'll call it there about 29%. Sorry, 29 degrees. Next one there for 20%, 0.20 times 360. 72, even 72 degrees. Pretty good. Last one there, 40%, 0.40 times 360 is 144 degrees. So, to confirm that this is the total, which should be not a percentage form, but here, a degree format, if I went ahead and added those all up, we're looking for that 360. So 115 plus 29 plus 72 plus 144, and there we go, we get a perfect 360. So if, again, for those who are interested and you want to use a protractor, that would be the steps to go about doing that. And you can go for it here. I'm just going to estimate that from the percentages given there. My first one there for type A blood, I'm just going to extend this down here. Got to formulate my center for my circle. Bring that down almost here in this fashion. I'm going to make a little P sign. That's 60's error there. That's about a third there. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but I know I want to label that for 32%. 32%. And that category there is going to be my type A blood. Next one, 8%. I'm going to go ahead and skip it. Because I want the other part here, that two-thirds... <laughs> If you go ahead and look at here, 20 plus 40 is 60, that's very close to two-thirds here. So what I want to do is break off the part, and 8% would be ever so tiny. So you could look at, if this was about 30% here, roughly with that or 33 percent this part would be you know little over but uh, 66 percent so what I'm gonna do here just kind of estimate that this would be you know maybe we could call that eight percent and maybe do it safe there that's our AB blood type there and the rest of it 40 and 20 kind of um, 50% of the other, maybe break it off down here. Uh, that looks like half that other wedge. So, not using anything too precise here, I'm going to use a little arrow here to indicate that this wedge is our AB blood type. At, and maybe if I ever squeeze that in here, let me give that a best shot here, that 8%. No, it's just too much there. I'm not going to be able to do it. All right, so let me throw that back here at, again, our golden 8% there for type AB blood. And then draw a little arrow here to indicate for that since we didn't have room there. And the remainder of that, that 40% is type O. And then down there at the bottom is our B type ranging there at 20%. If you want to get ultra fancy with that, we can go ahead and color code these. You know, maybe if you want to draw it in here that my girls like just love filling for the coloring books. I kind of feel like that's what I'm doing there. Uh, we'll call that, you know, orange and maybe over here, type A, you know, 
it's kind of short. Let me draw that, fill that in. It's color coding that. It's kind of refreshing to be able to draw something, paint by paint by numbers. It's kind of what that's like. Right. Next is I'll just draw here some conservative colors here and I realize that members of my audience are maybe slightly colorblind so I gotta pick uh, colors that are visible there and then the last one over here maybe I'll throw like a green here a lime green for a typo so it doesn't really matter you certainly do not have to color these you just need to have the representation there of the percentage and then the category for that, that qualitative data represented there. So there's our pie chart. The next one, what we want to do is now the bar graph. And more specifically for that, I'm going to grab those frequencies to do that here. So it looks like here for the peak, it goes up to the greatest frequency here is 10. So I'm going to use that accordingly here when I make my adjustments here for my Y axis. Um, and maybe even, I think maybe the, all these are even, well, not quite there for the five, but, you know, say that you say, um, maybe count by twos. So you could say two, four, six, eight, ten. there. So that would be a nice, you know, even scale, two, four, six, eight, and ten. Done. Now I can go create my bars. And just the given order there. Um, so the frequency would be 8 for the value or the, the qualitative data A. So there's my A there. I'm going to make, make my beautiful bar. Doing this all on my iPad. Really nice here. Slightly better than, um, than um, OneNote, in, in my opinion, though. But next one, A, B at a frequency of 2. So just kind of come down here, move that over. There's my A and the letter B. One side by side from one another there. And next is type B blood. Type B is at a 5. Frequency there of five. I'll just go halfway there between four and six. No problem. All right, uh, that is for B, and the last one is type O, peaking there at ten. Typo. All right, um, I've got a lot of room, so maybe in some cases, like you know, maybe I want to evenly space this out. Um, the one thing that we're not going to do is order the bars here. But I'll simply do that in the next graph because part three there is going to ask for that Pareto chart. Okay, beautifully spaced here. Given the maybe the line that I've got, I'll just do one more adjustment. Okay, now I can go ahead and color code these the same as here for my type O. Now even on that, I can put that percentage, 40% there at the top. I'll do that towards the end. So here's blue for type A, can be consistent there. All right, looks good, beautiful. Next one here is, let's go for B, for boy. Okay, done. And then I think is that orange there for A, B? All right, let's go ahead and label those percentages. For the first one there for A, 32%. Um, that was a frequency of eight. So we go 8 there. Next one doesn't look like but it's 2. 
this one was a 5, and this last one here is 10. So let's leave them there with the frequencies for the bar graph. And very simply here for the Pareto chart coming down here below, we're just going to put that in that descending order. So no problem here to be able to cut, uh, cut and paste, copy that in there. I just need to make my adjustment for the y-axis. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Two, four, six, eight, ten. More evenly spaces out here. Great. Looks good. I think it looks pretty good. Maybe this goes up a little bit more here. Not too picky there. Okay, so again, two, four, six, eight. 10 our evens there coming by our evens we got that one next one is the type a blood which is mine mine's type a i don't know how i remember that it's been a long time since i've donated blood but looking forward to doing that when we get back to the college campus a little blood drive All right, so there it is there. There's a descending order there for the Pareto chart. Everything there is beautifully done. Again, it's your preference there if you want to label the top of each bar by the frequency or even color that in. But you can look and see how beautiful that's represented there. And again, it, that's your preference there if you want to use degrees to do that. But other than that, that completes the problem here for this first example, graphing a pie chart, bar graph, and Pareto chart with qualitative data.